been gone Tell me who's been driving my Ford Jukeboxes are as American as Coca-Cola or Harley-Davidson. The second largest manufacturer of jukeboxes is located right here in Torrance. The segment of Common Sense focuses on the Rockola Corporation. Now I tried to get her started, but the darn thing just won't go. Whether it plays 78s, 45s, or today's CDs, just like rock and roll, Rockola Corporation's key players say their jukeboxes are here to stay. This is Rockola's main stage, a 50,000 square foot industrial building in northeast Torrance. Here, 80 skilled performers harmonize their crafts to create thousands of nostalgic and commercial jukeboxes a year. Most of these guys have been with us for years and years. We've got a couple people that, between Rockola and Antique Apparatus, they've been with the company 25 years. But I got a lot of guys with 15 and 10, and they're pretty skilled. Glenn Streeter used to do this stuff himself before taking over the Rockola Corporation. Yeah, when I started this, everybody told me I was nuts. The Fireball is Rockola's modern line. People buy them mostly for commercial use. Rockola also produces speakers and facades. Yeah, department stores use them, some diners. You can hang them on the wall. When the night is over, everyone will see. I'm going to prove to that woman she's the only one. These 1950s replicas are Rockola's hottest sellers. Its official name is the Bubbler, but Streeter has another name for them. Call it the 57 Chevy is the Bubbler. It's the most famous design of all time, and, and it's the most recognized. Chevy is among several American companies that Rockola makes special jukeboxes for. Streeter also has license agreements with... Harley Davidson. It's the current model. Live to ride, ride, ride to live. Streeter says people in other countries hunger for a slice of Americana, and he delivers it to them. This is actually going to Mexico. See, this has got, uh, this has all got, this is Spanish on it. We have Distributors worldwide sell the jukeboxes. Restaurant chains, nightclubs, and operators who work like vendors are the biggest buyers. Celebrities have been also known to purchase Rockola's jukeboxes. At six to eight thousand dollars a pop, they're not cheap, but neither is the quality. It takes over 100 pieces of different types of wood to create all the ripples, grooves, and niches that make up the cabinet. This is solid black American walnut. Now that's the lower knees on the door, underneath the pilasters. Streeter says bind wood pre-bent for wrapping around the box saves them time. But all the veneering is done here. Uh, this is African satin wood, which we use the most. And you can see the pattern and the grain to it. It's a very thin piece. Uh, and they get, they get put on the doors, and then they get cut again. From top to bottom, these cabinets require a lot of attention. Now, those go with the carving that you saw the young man carving back there. And there is a lot of work goes into these. And then all this gets spilled and sanded down and then stained. They get casters put in the bottom of them, and they're quite heavy. The insides of the cabinet are painted black once it's complete. Then it's time to add the glass, metal, plastics, and the other exterior materials that give the machines their antique looks. We actually have the grill cloth woven to the exact same standard as it was back in the 40s and 50s. We've learned a lot about the Rockola Corporation so far, but coming up next, we'll take a deeper look inside. Hey man, changing the oil? Yep, and I'm just about finished. Hand me that wrench. Try this. What's this for? For recycling your old motor oil. Just call 1-800-CLEANUP and I'll tell you the closest place to take it. Listen, Mac, I've been changing my oil for years, and I... 
I, I appreciate your advice. Uh, what'd you say that number was again? Call 1-800-CLEANUP, finish the job, and recycle it. Believe him. A message from the California Integrated Waste Management Board. When you mentor a child, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be yourself. Do good. Mentor a child. Call 1-877-BE-A-MENTOR. These jukeboxes look antique outside, but inside it's the best of both worlds. The interior of Rocola's jukeboxes combine detailed handcrafted styling of the 30s, 40s, and 50s with modern technology. This is one of the original backgrounds that were used in the 40s models, and this is a curtain like was used in the back of them. Rotating fluorescent bulbs with rainbow-colored cylinders wrapped around them light the inside. They operate on a small motor. And actually, this is a model airplane wheel. This is something that we created ourselves, and that, that runs us on a friction basis. And then when this is driven horizontally, there's a gear added to this, and it's gear-driven. The bubble tubes have dazzled people throughout jukebox history. The technology is amazingly simple. The stuff inside is non-flammable cleaning solvent that with just a little heat starts to bubble. See the bubbles will start just from my hand. They're not as big as they would be with a heater on it, but the warmer you get it, the more bubbles you're gonna get out of it. Records may be a thing of the past, but the technology that changes the songs remain the same. Uh, the basic part of the mechanism is right here, how it grips it, how it expands it, pulls it, flips it over, puts it on the player. That hasn't changed through the years. Rocola recently went horizontal. Streeter says they're stepping up the old 78 design. It has all the CDs stacked up in a line. Remember the old 45 machines? They used to have the 45 stacked up. And the thing would go back and forth and play them in front. Well, that's what this does only it's a lot more precise. Each one of these 100 CD racks undergo at least 24 hours of testing before they're installed. Streeter says he wants to make sure none skip a beat. Rockola's amplifier system has never had problems. Streeter says the system is an old and extremely valuable patent. Getting the opportunity to buy the Rockola name and their existing equipment was a huge opportunity for us because we didn't manufacture our own amplifiers and the mechanisms. We were buying that from a competitor. The amplifier has remained tuned into the times. The four-speaker system has upgraded over the years to produce over 360 watts of sound. Uh, this has got the, uh, the motherboard on it. That's the pre-amplifier board with all the connections on it. And then inside, there's the two power supply boards. Uh, not power supply, but power amp boards. The jukebox's operating system is playing a totally different tune. Rocola has kept pace with computer technology. These jukeboxes can be operated by remote control or controlled remotely. There's a processor in the computer, a processor in the amplifier, and a microprocessor in the keyboard. And everything's connected together with these telephone lines. Operators who work like vendors and have jukeboxes in establishments can now dial into them. Run them from their computer, or they can download all the diagnostics out of all the machines. They can get, uh, they'll know uh, how much money's in the machine, if there's been any problems with any CDs, you know, if any of them skipping. Coming up next on Common Sense, we'll take a look into the history of the Rockola Corporation. Stay with us. What if you were in trouble? Where would you turn? In communities around the country, there is help available. Volunteers of America has been helping people build better lives for over 100 years. 
one of the nation's largest nonprofit charitable organizations, Volunteers of America build stronger communities, restoring confidence and self-reliance to help people help themselves. Reaching out to abused and neglected children and families, caring for the special needs of the elderly and disabled, providing services to people who are homeless and in poverty. Across the nation, Volunteers of America helped over one and a half million people last year. There are no limits to what can be done. Find out how you can help change lives in your community. Call 1-800-899-0089. Volunteers of America, there are no limits to caring. David Rockola started his company in 1927. He made radio speakers and this trade stimulator, a gambling-like machine. It wasn't until 1935 that he made his first jukebox. This is the Model A now. It's called the Fireball Series. Uh, we call this a Model A after the original uh, Model A. This is the original Model A. Was that considered high technology? Mm-hmm. That was state of the art. The Model A was Rocola's first jukebox. You would uh, push the button that you wanted, and then you'd put your money into it, and it would just automatically take off, and uh, it would come to that button and stop, make that selection, and it would push the button back out. It was strictly mechanical. Why am I in Chicago? Rockola's Model A landed the corporation in between the two other Chicago-based jukebox giants, Wurlitzer and Seberg. Rockola was a, he was a real pioneer in the industry, and he, he was probably the most prolific guy in the entertainment industry, in the, our amusement industry. By the end of World War II, jukebox sales hit their highest note ever. The rhythm flowed through the 50s. In the 30s and 40s and 50s, we were literally everywhere, uh, not just bars and nightclubs, um, bowling alleys, restaurants. Uh, they were in bus stations. You could go to the Greyhound bus station. There'd be a jukebox over there. It was just a source of entertainment. Uh, broke up the monotony of things. Streeter's love for jukeboxes blossomed almost 30 years after the jukebox boom. His fascination of all things antique led him to his first jukebox. A friend of mine told me about some jukeboxes in Denver. And I went and checked them out. And we ended up buying them, hauling them back across the Rocky Mountains in two 20-foot rental trucks. And we started restoring them. He left his garage and opened a store in the San Fernando Valley. It was called Antique Apparatus. There, Streeter restored old jukeboxes and sold them to the public. Streeter says he had difficulty finding particular parts for his old machines, so he started manufacturing and selling them himself. That helped his business grow, but Antique Apparatus was a little fish compared to the jukebox giants. In 1993, three months before David Rocola died, Glenn Streeter got an offer to buy the Jukebox Legends company and did. Did you ever think you'd own David Rockola's company? No. No, not in my wildest imagination. It's like a dream come true. Although there still is an operation in Chicago, Streeter says he moved Rockola Corporation's main plant to Torrance to be closer to home. But the music doesn't stop here. Well, we kind of outgrew the little hobby here, so... I use the terminology, I started my garage and this is just a bigger garage, but uh, we've just outgrown the size of the building and we purchased the building next door uh, last year. So now we're using that for just inventory. So he admits nothing compares to the 50s, but fortunate for Streeter, many restaurants, nightclubs and home decorators have been going retro. Streeter says people come to him because he owns the name of the patriarch of jukeboxes. And he's confident his business, like rock and roll, will never die.